Okay. Everyone, welcome to Kirtle Kol Shira in partnership with Breslov.org and of course Yeshiva Tera Shimon. Okay, Bo Hashem. Bo Hashem. All right, so this is uh, Parsis Kisisa. Wow. Uh, to me, this is one of the most difficult Parsis in the whole Torah. <laughs> it's a very, very difficult Parsa. I mean, you know, uh, if you think about it, uh, we made it, we made it out of Mitzrayim. We made it, uh, we made it, uh, the, we did the 49 days. We got the Kabbalah Satayra. We had Kabbalah Satayra. Maish Rabbeinu, Maish goes up to Shemayim. And, uh, and, uh, well, they made a calculation. They made a calculation, right? In the sixth hour, they made the calculation. They said that Maish is Moshe. Right, Moshe was procrastinating, right? Procrastinating, and uh, uh, you know it, it's it's interesting. The, the word bo sheish is really bo sheish, bo sheish, right? Came the sixth. It came the six. It came the sixth hour. The sixth hour. And uh, the Gemara, the Gemara in Psachim says that you know really um, on the on the fourth hour, on the fourth hour on erev Pesach. Right, we don't eat. We don't eat the. We don't eat the. Uh, we don't eat chametz anymore on the fourth hour. But when it comes to the sixth hour, it becomes also gomer. Right? Unbelievable. Right? Bosh sheish. All right. Anyway, and, and and so what happened was the erev rav, the erev rav. What's that noise? It isn't. Yeah, you can just mute. Just mute. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm muted here. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Okay, so, so, so there's a, a, a trend of thought. Okay, so uh, what happened was they, uh, they, uh, well, they came, they, 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 it, was, it was really the A of Rav, because the Torah says uh, the Am. Whenever it says Am, um, it's referring to the A of Rav. Whenever it says B'nai Yisrael, you know, then, then it's referring to Kla Yisrael. Really, they um, they uh, they were they became very rowdy. Let's just put it like that: very, very rowdy. Uh, the Medra says that they actually killed Chor, right? Chor, they actually killed Chor, and then my, and then Aaron the Kayan thought, "Uh oh, okay, uh, I better do something because I'm going to be next." <laughs> they didn't care. They didn't care. All right, and. Uh, all right, and meanwhile, meanwhile, Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu, you know, uh, you got to go downstairs, come back down. Something's going on down there, right? And we know what ha- we know what happened, right? They, they made the, they made the, the golden calf, but it was such a it was such a chaval. Why? Because we know that when we came to Harsinai, the whole idea of Misa, the whole idea of, of sickness, everything was finished. We we lost, it was all gone. It was gone. We, 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 we made, there was a total tikkun when we came back to the state before the chayt of the eitz adas tovarah. And then they introduced it all over again. It's unbelievable. And then, and then, and then, and then in the parsha, what happened was, Moshe Rabbeinu says, Mi Hashem Eli, right? Mi Hashem Eli. Who's going to, who's on my, who's on the side of Hashem come to me, right? Who's, the, who's on my side? All these things that happened, it's uh, mind-boggling, right? Really, truly mind-boggling. Um, uh, and uh, do you have any? Uh, you want to say any comments on on these things? Do you have any 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 insights? Anyone want to say anything? Okay. All right. So I'm let's. So what? All good. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. So we see now here. So we uh, let's talk. We, with the Torah introduces the idea of the machsus hashekel, right? The machsus hashekel. Everybody has to give, right? The famous thing, ha'asher layabev hadal layamit, right? No matter if he was a very wealthy person, he couldn't say, ah, that, that's all I'm going to give is a half a shekel. Yes, you're only going to give a half a shekel for this mitzvah. And then the Yanni says, I can't afford it. Too bad. You have to give the half a shekel. You're gonna have to bu- you're gonna have to borrow. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to do whatever you have to do, beg, but you have to give the half a shekel. So let's learn, let's learn a little bit about, about why why the half a shekel. Let's learn a little bit about it. 
Rav Nassim has a beautiful teaching here. Asha layabev hada layamet al kein nikram shkolim. Therefore, they called shkolim. Ki yesh pozeh mishkal gadol. Shek mishkal mishkal is a scale. It's a balance. It's a balance, right? It actually means a balance, right? The old scales where they 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 went, you know, you put a weight on it and you you figured it out, right? Mishkal. Huh? Ki tzrichin liyos on the betak lezanova. Velias ayin mamish, velias shum toyos pnia kla. Because really, a person's supposed to really be, we know, um, we're supposed to be an honor. A person's supposed to be humble, right? Humble people. And we're supposed to be so humble that we're supposed to have nothing really to do with things to recognize really what am I? Uh, I? I'm in this world. I'm in this world to accomplish what I'm here to accomplish. I'm not in this world. I, 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 for, for Stam, right? And, and Hashem has me here for a purpose. And really, what am I? Well, like we say in Adavni, what are we? Mamash, what are we? A person has to realize that. Uh-huh. But on the other hand, you have to be strong. So you have, it's a balance. Mishko. Mishkal has to be a balance. So it, 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 it is a, we, we, we learn these ideas, but I want to go over something outside a little bit now. There's such a thing as, as having, as having Azaz the Kedusha, right? Azaz the Kedusha. Um, we know this concept of the Azaz the Kedusha played itself out in a few places. It played itself out, it played itself out when, when it came to, when it came to, um, um, uh, 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 Melech, Shola Melech was charged, was charged to to, uh, to kill Amalek. But Shola Melech said, "Well, you know, uh, who am I? Who am I to kill? Who am I to kill the king of of Amalek? Who am I?" That was that was that was a misplaced Anava. See, that was a mis that was a case of a misplaced Anava. Because again, Shmuel Anavi told him, this is, this is what Hashem wants you to do. So if this is what Hashem wants you to do, you have to do it. You're supposed to do it. Don't say, yeah, I can't do it. You know, I can have another when it comes to my own personal gaiva, right? My own personal. I wanna, I wanna show off, right? I go buy, I, I go buy a fancy, uh, a fancy car. I get a fancy this. I wanna show. That's that's being a guy, a bal gaiva, right? But not, not when Hakadosh Baruch Hu tells him. Now, so what happened? Where's a case of? Where's a case of of true anava? Let's take Mordechai. Mordechai. Mordechai, let's use that example now. Mordechai was told, was told by, by, uh, by Achashrei, by, by, by Haman, that he has to bow down. Everyone has to bow down to him. Everyone has to bow down to him. Now, one would say, listen, I don't, you know, I'm scared for my life. So, okay, I won't bow down. I, I'll, I'll bow down. I, I, I'm scared for my life. What am I supposed to do? But we know, that Mordechai said no. Like Kaira, like Yishtachv, he would not. He would not bow down for nothing. He would not bow down for nothing. Why? Because again, that's that's challenging his his service to Hashem. That's challenging his service to Hashem. He was an honor. Mordechai was a true honor. When he came to anything of his own personal being, his own personal things, he was an honor. But he became, he became, an, he became, he had Azaz the Kedusha when someone was challenging his Yiddishkeit, when someone was challenging his service to Hashem. There he had, there he had, he had a brazenness. He was able to say to him, and I'm not going to bow down to you. You hear that? I'm not going to bow down to you. Now, whether, whether he could or he couldn't, that's not the point. But that's using, he used his, his, his gaiva in the right place and is Anav in the right place? Where, where Shaul HaMelech used, he used, he should have used his gaiva to say, you know what? I don't know, I don't know, uh, 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 I, 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 don't, I don't know 
I don't know where that thing popped up. I'm, I'm not sure why, why Hashem wants me to do this. However, if Hashem wants me to do this, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to be successful. Right? The person, Hashem could have done that. I don't know why it keeps popping up that thing. All right, either way. Either way. Are right, you, under, you understand? Now, so look at this. So that's why it says over here, a person has to be an on of, but on the same hand, he has to be chazak. He has to be strong. Where he has to be strong. And those are the two examples. Okay? Okay. It has to be a true malashem. It has to be a donation. It's a donation for Hashem. This is the idea of the half a shekel. This is the idea of the half a shekel. Moshe Rabbeinu didn't understand this. What's this balance? When am I supposed to use Anava? When am I supposed to use Gaiva? When, how am I supposed to do this? How is it supposed to be balanced? Moshe Rabbeinu didn't understand. Rashi says, Rashi says, Moshe Rabbeinu was, was trying to say, how am I going to be able to accomplish to make Kal Yisrael? That everyone can truly be anovim. They can truly be humble people. Bitaklis. In the, with the, with, 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 wholeheartedly. But yet they'll have this balance. They'll have this balance where when they need to use the anovim, they'll use the anovim. When they used to need to use the Azaz to Kedusha, they'll use the Azaz to Kedusha. How am I going to teach Klai Yisrael this? This is what Maitre Benu is trying to understand. When do I use it? In other words, I can't always be an Anav, and I can't always be a Balgaiva. There are times I have to be an Anav, and there are times I have to have Gaiva. Right? Really, the way to understand it is, anything that has to do with someone personally, their own personal being, right? Me. You, if it has to do with us personally, so then I have to be an honor, right? But when it has to do something with serving Hashem and someone gets in my way, right? I want to go to the minion, I want to daven, I want to do this and that, and someone's in my way. There I can use Aziz. There I can use, I can be, I can use, I, I can use my strength to go against this. I don't have to accept that. I do not have to accept it. I can go against it. This is what Maish Rabbeinu was trying to understand, this balance. What is it? When am I supposed to use this? When am I going to use this? How am I going to teach this to everybody? Now, and this is the, the thing that we were commanded when it came to the Shkolem, when it came to giving that half a shekel. No one should come to, to be to be haughty. The rich guy will say, "Ah, what do you mean a, a, a half a shekel? Here, I'll give you twenty five shekel. Here, take a hundred shekel. What do I have? A half a shekel? Don't come a gabal gaiva. Don't don't become haughty. Oh, I can give you whatever I want. No, you can't. The Torah says a half a shekel." A person couldn't, could, shouldn't come to an another psula. What's another psula? The person, he really is a palgaiva, but he acts in a humble way. <laughs> he acts in a humble way. Another psula. Small minded people. Because it's the way of wealthy people to be very, very arrogant and to be and to be very snooty, right? Right? Like it says in Mishle, the rich person answers with brazenness. A person, the Navi Yirmiya says, a person shouldn't feel so, so hatsy tatsy with himself because he's smart, because he's strong, because he has money. Hey, what did you do? Were you, did you, did you choose to be born this way, that way? What did you do? Hashem made you this way. 
Hashem made us with certain how smart we are, how how, how strong we are, how, how how much money we're gonna have. Nimsa Shashiris who me advarim shaderiklis God al Bahem. Ashiris is in the way that a person can can bring himself to the wrong the wrong things. He, 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 people think that, you know, they're from the Hecha defense there, you know. Uh, he, he's, he's a very wealthy person. He doesn't associate with the other people. Vidalis Vanius, who bechinas anov. Shama David, ki ani ve'evyon anoichi. David Amelech said about himself, ki ani ve'evyon anoichi. David Amelech says, I'm an impoverished sinner. That's the mitzvah tzedakah. When you give the money, when a person has means, and he gives money to the, to the poor person, he has to do it in a way with rachmanis, with compassion. In other words, to, 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 to understand, to, to feel the person's pain. When they come to the door, when you're talking to the Ani, listen to what he's saying. Sometimes it means more to them when you listen to what they're saying, what they're asking and telling you, than the money that you give them. Of course they need the money. But sometimes when you, when you give them, you lend them an ear. It means so much to somebody. Feel their pain. Feel their pain. Feel their pain. A person, when he gives, when, he, when a per, rich person, when a rich person takes the time and he, and he sits down with the Ani and he listens to him and he feels what he's saying and he gives him more than he, he gives him more, he gives him as much as he could, he gives him. That's Anava Bishlemas. That's Anava. That's humility. Because again, it's the way of the rich person to be snooty, arrogant to the poor person. Why are you bothering me? Look what he says now. A person, if you have a wealthy person doesn't give any money for tzedakah, that's because he's a very, 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 very arrogant person. He doesn't feel anything for the, 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 the ani as a destitute person. He does he ever stop to think, hey, Hashem, why did you give me all this money? Why do I have all this money? Hashem, why did you give it to me? Does a, does a rich person think about this? Yes, uh, silver uh, 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 vessels. And he has uh, pearls and jewels and gems. And everything else. And the Ani is so, this impoverished person is so destitute. He doesn't have bread. He doesn't have clothes in his house, this Ani. If the only the rich person would pay a little attention, give a little, pay a little heart to the Ani. It would be mason lay pay the lot of lazeba emes bivada yay and nice and lay be chef a godel who believe taif. If he would actually listen to what he's saying and realize why did Hashem put me in this position that I'm on this side at the door and not on the other side. Because I have to do what I have to do. So then the, uh, that rich person will give plenty. He'll give him what he needs. He'll give him everything that he needs. Be chef a godel believe taif. But if the person is, unfortunately, is, a, is an arrogant person, he doesn't pay any heart, he doesn't give any, he doesn't give any, uh, pay any attention to the Ani. And then he doesn't give him. And we see these people like that. He thinks that whatever I have, it's coming to me. Like people will say, Allah's kum tsamir. It's mine. It's, I'm deserving of it. I'm very deserving of this. <laughs> then I should have all of these things and all of everything. You hear this? 
The rich person, some people will think if they're arrogant, they'll look at the, the, the ani, the poor person that comes to them, right? And they'll say he feels, he feels that the ani is a thief. He's trying to kill him. He's trying to take his money from him. Because he's asking him for, him for some money. He's asking for him to help. He needs a little help. He's asking for a little bit of help. That's why he feels that way. So therefore anyone that Hashem bestows unto this person any kind form of Hashiras. Whether he's a very wealthy person or not such a wealthy person. The very wealthy people. They have in their homes filled with all kind of guard clothes, all kind of uh, adornments. They have precious stones. Umagulus and pearls and gems, all kind of things. She yasimu alaybam hatif, shiflusam beemes. They should really put place into their hearts what their real place is beemes. The yiskiru es atzmam hatif, she yacholia shaani u tai vikosha yoisim imenu. And a person should think that really maybe this ani. Is really a much better person than I am. V'yishtatev atzmai. So let me partner with this ani, because he's better than me. So as he's better than me, let me partner with him. Atzmai b'tzara to feel his pain. Shalani v'dachkoi. V'az b'vada yitain tzedakah b'shtei yadayim. Then he'll give his tzedakah with two hands. You ever see someone give tzedakah with two hands? The Rabbi Nachman says you're supposed to give money with two hands. Why do you give money with two hands? You put the coin or the dollar or whatever you're putting in the your, your shekel, or whatever you're putting in, you do with two hands. Because this, the side, the right side, the right side is the side of chesed. The left side is the side of gvura. I want to train the left side to also give tzedakah. So use both hands. Use both hands to put the money in the tzedakah box. It's a beautiful idea. Bishteyadayim. Bishteyadayim. Give it a nice amount. Give a generous pledge. Give a generous donation. According to what I can give, and I give a little bit more. And through tzedakah, that's if you want to have, if you want to merit to have another. How do you merit to have another? Through tzedakah. Through tzedakah, you give tzedakah, you give charity. Then you're gonna get. Then you're gonna get. You're gonna get another. That's what the Rebbe wrote down in in Sefer the Aleph Facebook, right? In the Sefer Amidus, because the whole idea of tzedakah comes through another. Kai dei tzedakah mechayes ani for everyone. Shu bechinas another. You take that on the the ani that had that had that had the ani that that, that, that felt he's a layutzloch nothing. He felt he's all down. And out on the world has nothing. And now you give him something and you mechaya the person. You give the person life. You give Mamish the person life. It's amazing what we can do. It's amazing. It's not only, it's not only when I, when I, how much I give. It's the way you give. It's the way you give it. It's so, so, so important. But the Ani, he has the opposite way. He has the opposite way. He has another psula. He doesn't recognize that Hashem gave him this challenge. Right? Hashem gave him the challenge. And he has to, he, 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 he asks for money. Okay? Okay? He shouldn't have, a, he shouldn't be an Ani like that. He should be able to go ask. And he should understand that when I come to the uh, to the rich person, I'm doing the rich person a bigger favor than he's doing me. Me giving uh, by me by me coming to his door and giving him the opportunity, the opportunity to give the money. We know that tzedakah is tatzel mimavis, right? Tzedakah is tatzel mimavis. 
Tzedakah, tzedakah can help a person, save a person from death. Can you believe that? You give money for tzedakah, it can help a person, save a person's life. Mamish. Ki machmas goidla and yusay lai ba lide anava psula shuhu. Right, he comes to this another psula. Right, he comes to the another psula. Yeah, let me just open this up here. Okay. V'nivzev ha'otzel chas v'shalom. And he becomes embarrassed. And he becomes, and he becomes uh, lazy. Oh yeah. B'mokim she'ein tzrichin l'hakten es atzma in a place where he doesn't have to make himself small. He doesn't have to lower himself. He takes him out of that idea of the another psula, that the 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 katnas, that small mind in this, and he puts in the, when the rich person gives him his money and he takes care of him. When he does that, then what's he doing? He's actually giving him another. He's he's taking away from the another psula. He he he, he, he heals him from that. The chain awesome. He got Asher, the rich, the wealthy person. Shemi goydel Ashirusai hayayacha lavoi lide geyes kamer avleidei shemachse mamayna. He by by him giving up some of his money. He lowers his, his arrogance. I know the mitzvah tzedakah is, is equally weighted. Shkula, right? The word shekel. It's weighted. Equally weighted. Because you're fixing both People, you're fixing the ani and you're fixing the asha. The asha gets fixed. He gets he he gets he gets a reprieve from his arrogance, and the ani gets a reprieve from his meich in the katnas, right? His meich in the katnas, and his 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 is he doesn't feel a false humbleness because he realizes that the asha is giving him this and he lifts him up as well. So that's why it's the matzah shekel, half and half. It gets balanced. It needs to be balanced. A person shouldn't be too haughty. A person shouldn't be too 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 humble. If the person has to have, be perfectly balanced. And again, we'll just leave it with this this lesson like this. This to understand this idea that 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 whenever it comes, whenever it comes to someone's own personal his own personal ego, there you have to always use another, right? Always use another. Use always humility. But when it comes, when it comes to serving Hashem, then you use Azaz the Kedusha. That's Azaz the Kedusha. Right? That's, that's what they call the Holy Chutzpah. That's the Holy Chutzpah. Alright, so this is what we learned from the Master Sashekel. That's why it has to be perfectly balanced. And Maishu Rabbeinu was, 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 was asking HaKadosh Baruch, how is this going to be? How am I going to teach this over? Because Maishu Rabbeinu was the Anab Mikol Adam. We know, right? Maishu Rabbeinu was Anab Mikol Adam. We go on in the parsha. We go on in the parsha, and Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Moshe Rabbeinu says to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, "We know if you're not going to forgive the Jewish people for the golden calf, Macheni Nami Sifrecha, take me out of your book, Hashem. I don't want to be part of this." It's in the parsha. Macheni Nami Sifrecha. Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu saw the beauty in every single Jew, and he told Hashem, "I understand that we made a mistake. I got it." I believe I understand that Hashem. I saw it. I know that. But do you know how beautiful the Jewish people are? Do you know how beautiful they are, Hashem? Let me tell you. Let me tell you how beautiful each shit is. And that's what Maishra Bainu did. That's what Maishra Bainu did. Maishra Bainu showed how every single Jew was a was a, was a, was a gem by themselves. So let's look at the next we have another lesson here. It's a beautiful lesson. On this lesson that we were talking about before, about Baishesh Maisha. Right? We spoke about it a little bit outside, but now let's see, let's see something inside. So, I know you caught our recording, but I had a one question. Both of these are my. I'm not sure. 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 I
Ki Baishish Maisha. You see, it says Ha'am. It doesn't say Vayar B'nai Yisrael. It says Vayar Vayar Ha'am. Ha'am. What does it mean, Vayar Ha'am? Ki Baishish Maisha. That was the Erev Rav. Look what it says now. Kol Pigam Ha'erev Rav. The whole, the whole pagam when it came to the Erev Rav, when it, with the Egel Azov, when they made the golden calf, when was that? That was the time of Mincha, Acha Chatzos, after Chatzos. Maisha Kosa, Bayar Am, Ki Baishish Maisha. Ki Baishish, because it came to the sixth hour. Kamaisha Rabbi Seinazal. Ki kol pegam ha'eviv rav ha'yashalei tzimtzu ha'ar karayu v'loi kitshu machshav tam klal. They didn't work on purifying their thoughts, sanctifying their thoughts. Rak ratzu l'staka l'irois ma'ashalei ha'ya ro'ya aleim klal. The problem was, see, look, look. Maisha Rabbeinu, Maisha Rabbeinu, Wanted so much, so so badly, so badly, to bring more cover to Hakadosh Baruch. That's what he wanted to do, and he knew the secret. He knew the secret that if I could take the Erev Rav, these people, that these people are such low, low people involved in the Avodas are steeped in Avodas are steeped in all impurity, and I could take them and bring them closer to Hashem. How great is Hashem's covet? You understand? When a tzaddik is when we when when a tzaddik is serves Hashem, it's good, it's great. When a yid serves Hashem, it's great. But when someone that's so far away serves Hashem, that's so much greater, right? So Maish Rabbeinu wanted. That's what he was trying to do. But Hakadosh Baruch Hu told him, Maish Rabbeinu, it's not. They're not ready for that. <laughs> they're not ready. But Maish Rabbeinu said, no, Hashem, I, I think I could do this. I think we could do this. And look what happened, right? All of, our, 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 all of the troubles and trials and tribulations happened because of the Erev Rav came out with us. The Erev Rav came out with us. And they didn't want, the Erev Rav didn't want to accept, they didn't want to accept to have pure, pure thoughts. All they wanted to think about was thinking about of, 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 of impurity, of, of znus. This is what they were thinking about. Right? Immorality. That's what they were thinking about. Their thoughts and their actions we're not pure at all. Rak datam ayu gadol vehevinu bedatam begudulas Maisha ayadeya das sheheya bahem. But Maisha Rabbeinu, they had some information, right? They had some information. They saw. They saw what Maisha Rabbeinu did, right? They saw. They they lived through it. Ayu gadol hevinu bedatam gedulas Maisha ayadeya das sheheya bahem ayadei kol oisus ha'maisim shalas aleim. Maisha Rabbeinu did so many miracles, so many miracles, so many things that he did, they, they saw it with their own eyes. And therefore they went after Maisha. Oh, he's the winning team, right? You know, there's some people that they have their team, right? And, and no matter what, the team does good, the team doesn't do good, they stay with their team, right? And then you have those that always want to go with the winning team, Right? <laughs> Right, they know the wishy washy. They go, uh, he's doing good. I'll, I'll be his fan. He's doing good. He'll be, be his fan. Oh, Claudius was doing good now. Oh, I'll be their fan. I'm going to go with them. I'm going with them. This is literally what they did. Literally what they did. They didn't want to take up that battle with the battle in their mind. That the mind is telling them to do this, that, and the other thing. That he want to change that thought. The Rebbe teaches us, we learned this so many times, that you can only think about one thing at a time. You can only have one thought in your mind at one time. One time, one thought. One thought. 
If you had more than one thought in your mind at one time, the mind would explode. They really couldn't, they couldn't handle it. And the example I like to always give is, you know, if you have a computer, right? You have a computer and you want the computer to be able to do two tasks. So you'll need a dual processor, right? If you want the computer to do two tasks simultaneously, one processor can't do that. One processor can do one task at a time. If you want to do two tasks at a time, then you'll have to do uh, get a dual processor. Or, 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 or you need to do four of them to get a quad processor. Whatever you're going to do, how many applications? So I ask you, if, 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 um, if, if a computer can't do two things at once, can a human mind do two things at once? So you'll tell me I can think of two things at once. I'll tell you, you can't. You're thinking about one thing at a time, you're switching it back and forth in your mind, right? You keep switching it. They didn't understand this. They didn't want to have this melchama in their mind. They liked what they were thinking about. They didn't want to have that battle to think about something else. Now came to Amos, like Rotsu, Hashem is Baruch Lekablam, and therefore Hashem didn't want to accept them. Hashem said to Moshe Ben, I don't need these people. I don't want them. These are not people that want to be with me. They don't, Hashem didn't want them. Hashem loy rots Hashem is bark lekablam. Hashem didn't want to accept them. Rak Moshe Choshav. Moshe Benu thought, she is garu be'emes. Oh, they'll convert honestly. They'll convert and they'll change their whole thought process. And they're going to change their whole way of life. This is what Moshe Benu thought about them. Maisha Rabbeinu said, oh, how wonderful it'll be if these Gerim, these far out people, far away from Hashem people, they can come and they can be connected, be connected to the Shechina Kedosh. Aval heim shichasu, v'hishchisu, ayadei kol apigamim anah. But they kept, they kept, they kept on, 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 on defiling themselves more and more through all of their blemishes that they made. Until they made the eagle as of. They had the truth in their minds, but they couldn't deal with it. They too much lied, too much, they saw too much. They couldn't deal with it. Because they were so in, they were so they were so steeped in their thoughts, in the, what they wanted to think, they couldn't deal with it. After the kilkel came after sheish, this man nincha shoaz trichin laasayik betikon atzimsum kimevayi bepnim beheim pogmu bazeh oz daika. Okay, we know that mincha time is the time of of din. Right? That's the time of Din. Mincha time is the time of Din. Right? Mincha is a very, very, is the most, the Balatanya says, many, many say that Mincha is the most important feel of the day. You know why Mincha is the most important feel of the day? Because you're doing your day, you're, 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 you're running your day, right? You're in the middle of, uh, you're, you're doing your business or whatever you're doing during the day. You stop in the middle of the day what you're doing, and you turn to Hashem, you daven mincha. Amazing. Shachris, you daven early in the morning when you get up. You didn't do anything yet, so you go to daven. My, if you go at night, you go at night when it's finished, the day's at the end of, end of the day. But mincha, middle of the day, that's something special. That's Mamash, a special time to come turn to our Kaddish Baruch Hu. But that's the point. Turn to Hashem. Turn to Hashem. But they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to do that. They wanted a free lunch, literally. The, the, the Maish Rabbeinu, Hashem is on, uh, on Maish Rabbeinu's team, and we're doing well, so we'll stick with Moshe Rabbeinu. We'll stick with him. Ah, Maish Rabbeinu's procrastinating. We don't know where he is, right? Baishish Maisha. We don't know where he is. So then we, 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 we don't have the winning team anymore. We'll go back to our other ways. So how are we going to go to our other ways? Well, Hashem doesn't like if we do what we want to do. So if we get rid of if we get rid of uh, this whole thing with Hashem and we make an eagle as well, so then the, the 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 golden calf will tell us we can do whatever we want, and that's what they wanted. 
You see the good side of Maish Rabbeinu, how good Maish Rabbeinu was, how he wanted so badly, he wanted so, so badly to bring more covet for our Kodesh Baruch Hu in the world. He wanted so badly to do that. But they weren't ready. They weren't ready. They weren't ready. These people were not ready to give up their old ways. Right? When we do tshuva, how do we do tshuva? We say, Hashem, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I'm sorry I did whatever I did. Whatever that case, whatever the thing is. Hashem, I'm sorry. And please, Hashem, help me that I don't do this again. Guide me. Help me. Be with me so I don't do this again. That's tshuva. But they weren't ready to do that. They weren't ready to say we made a mistake and we don't want to do it again. They enjoyed very much what they were doing. And that was the problem. And that was the problem, right? Then, then, then we, he goes on to say, okay, well, we'll, we'll look at I have another piece that, that we said, come, come, uh, I say, Kim, okay. Let's see, here's the third page, yeah. Yeah, this is a nice piece also here. Yeah. Right, we see, we read this, we read this on the on the uh, fast days, right? We read these words. We all know these words. We read this all the times. So look what Rabbi Nassim has a beautiful teaching on this here. It's the avoid of the tzaddikim to what sweeten the judgment upon all klal Yisrael. That's what the tzaddikim do. There's din, right? We make mistakes, right? We cause din, we cause judgment, right? We know up on high there are 24 courthouses. And the 24 courthouses, the judges are angry when we're not doing, when we're not doing the Ratz and Hashem. We cause din, we cause judgment. But the tzaddikim want to be mamtik, they want to mamtik the din. Therefore the, the tzaddikim are kabbal upon themselves, in infliction upon themselves. Because of the sins of the Akhlai, so why do they do that? The tzaddikim take all of the lacking, they take it upon themselves. What do they say? Because we're not able to fix the din as, 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 as we're supposed to. So therefore, therefore it's our fault. And therefore we come to sin. We come to sin and they are soivel. They endure the pain of the sin of Kla Yisrael. Because the tzaddikim are out there. They're trying to protect us from sin. We need tzaddikim to help us with the Yitzhahara today, right? Look at the look at look at look what goes on in the world today. Unbelievable. Mamish just means so much now. We need tzaddikim to take upon themselves and they do that battle with the Yitzhar, Matsilin Yisrael Mayavinas, and they can protect, save Jews from sin. We know when it came to when it came to uh, to Noach, right? Let's start with Noach, right? So Noach, Noach was a tzaddik in his generation, but Noach didn't dive in for the people. He didn't think. He didn't believe he had the ability to dive in for the people. He was trying to save himself. After he saw what happened, the world got destroyed. So I called him a shaita. 
You, you, you had the opportunity. Now you're davening for the world after the world was destroyed. How come you didn't daven before the world was destroyed? Right? When it came to Avram Avinu, right? Avram Avinu did what Avram Avinu did the best that he could. Avram Avinu did wow. Avram Avinu was considered like a mountain, a har. Avram Avinu was the har. Right? He went up on Har Marie. He took, he took on, on, on the Temple Mount. He took Yitzhak Avinu. Right? He's known as the, he's known as the Har. Yeah, Avram Avinu is known as the Har, the mountain. Yeah, Avram, uh, 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 Yitzhak Avinu is known as the Soda. Yaakov Avinu is known as the Bias. Right? Vika Shleimus Bechina Zeis Yeh Nigmar Ayadei Mashiach Shu Maisha Ba'atzmai. The final, uh, the final, the final uh, 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 aspect of what we're learning of the tikkun of the din is going to get straightened out when the Shiach Tzedkenu is going to come. By a day, Mashiach to Moshe Ba'atzmai, Mashiach, which is going to be Moshe by himself. The Zayah says, right? We know that Mashiach Ben David, right? We know that it's Mashiach Ben David. But Mashiach is going to also be an aspect of Moshe Rabbeinu as well. Who was Moshe Nefesh for Klai Yisrael more than Moshe Rabbeinu? Moshe Rabbeinu could have easily said, when Hashem said destroy the Jewish people, okay. He could have said okay. He could have said okay. But he didn't say okay. He went to he went to battle for us. Moshe Rabbeinu was a true leader, not like the leaders we have today. The leaders we have today are followers. They don't lead, right? They follow what the polls tell them, right? These are, they, they, we don't call them leaders, correct? The polls say this, they do that. The polls say this, people say this, they do that. They don't have any, they don't have any control of what they do on their own. It's all based on the polls. A real leader, a true leader leads. He leads the way. And the people follow. Not that the, the people are leading and the, and the leader is following. You understand? Moshe Rabbeinu was a true leader. Right? The people were doing the wrong thing, but he was still doing the right thing. And Hashem said, I'm going to destroy the Jewish people. And he said, no, Hashem. And he fought for us. He went to bat for us. And Moshe Rabbeinu is always going to bat for us. And Moshe Rabbeinu is with us through the Golas. And he's going to bring, we're going to experience the final redemption. We're waiting, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to send us the final redemption. And every Jew, could you imagine what, how beautiful that's going to be? All the Jews, every Jew around the world, every Jew around the world, every Jew will turn back to Hashem. Is that amazing? What a beautiful thought that is. Right? We all have people, we all know people that went the other way. We all have people in our families that don't always keep everything. They don't do the right thing. We know that. How wonderful that's going to be when everyone's going to come back and be on the same page as Cloud together as Christ will be on one page together. One page all together. Oh yeah, it's such a beautiful thing to think about. And every Jew will come back to Hashem in truth. Truthfully come back to Hashem. This is the real Avaida of the Mitzadikim. Of course, Maishu Abeinu, Mashiach Lahamtik, Shayrish Hadin. To be Mamtik, the sweet and the source of the judgment. In that place, in that place of the Metzach Atachtai, which is known as the Zer Anpin, we have the 24 courthouses with the judges. They can go in their plate, these places and affect the opinion, a redemption from all of this nonsense. That's what we're trying to, that's what they're trying to do. There's a tzaddik in each generation that knows all the different judges in all the courthouses. 
and he can effect a, a, a redemption, a, a, an acquittal from every one of the 24 courthouses up on high. And if he can't do that, then he goes directly to Hashem to get it acquitted. Okay, this is the great tzaddikim, right? From all the way up on high, Achi is batlu memela kol adinim shel mata. He goes to the high place. He goes to the metzach elyon, which is connected to the rava the rava. He goes to that place of pidyon, rotzon. He goes to that place of rotzon. How does how does Rabbeinu get to the place of rotzon? I'll tell you. It's very simple. We know that Moshe Rabbeinu is going Ben Shmad Lerotzen. Shmad Lerotzen, right? He takes everyone from the side of Shmad. Shmad is leaving the, the, the Jewish people. It's the bottom of the bottom, right? But there's all different levels of Shmad. Anytime we choose to do something against Hashem's will, and we do what we want to do and not Hashem's will, that's a level of Shmad. The Torah, Moshe Rabbeinu, can bring us back from the Shmad Lerotzen. Why? Moshe Rabbeinu, it says, U Moshe is Mashu. U Moshe is Mashu. Mashu, what's Mashu? A little bit, a little morsel. Really, from not doing the right thing and being on the other side to coming back to Hashem is just changing the thought. Changing the thought. That's all he's doing. It's a Mashu. Listen to this. Watch this. Shmad is the Gematria 344. Shmad, 344. Moshe is 345. Moshe. Mem, Shin, Hey, 345. Ratzon is 346. Ratzon is 346. Ratzon is 346. See there how beautiful this is? This is what Maish Rabbeinu, this is what the Tzaddikim are doing. They're taking us and they're making these, they're taking the pigeon from the highest place, which is connected again to the 50th gate which is connected again to, to, the, to the 49, 49 days of the Sphira, which is connected to the menorah. On the menorah, there were 49 ornaments. There were, there were buttons, there were, there were flowers, and there were little cups, right? The total of 49, not stam. Not stam, there are 49. Seven branches, seven branches, right? Seven, why seven branches? The Zer Anpin is seven, right? Maish Rabbeinu is working Maish Rabbeinu is working like we learned before. Maish Rabbeinu is trying to give us this balance. What is our nova? What, when, do we need to use the, when do we need to use our arrogance? When do we use humility? When do we need arrogance? When do we need to use our nova? When do we need to use gases? When? How do you do that? To know when to do that. This is what the tzaddikim are working on. The tzaddikim are working on to, to help us mamish, mamish, mamish. Actually, is batlum amele kol adinim shel mata. The Mata, Vichola Yitzrin Royan, and all the Yitzhar will get rid of them. She Yonkimi and they they nur they 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 get their they get their sustenance. The the Yitzhar gets it from whenever we do sin, for wherever it is din. So if you get rid of the din, you get rid of the Yitzhar Mamela. Get rid of the din, you get rid of the Yitzhar. Unbelievable. She Yonkimi and Vayadei Zay Yashuva Yisrael Hashem Yisbarach. All Jews will turn back to Hashem Yisbarach. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu will send us the Geula speedily in our day, speedily in our day. This is what we're trying to accomplish, Rev. This is what we're trying to do. This is what we need more today than anything. We have to believe in the Kayach and the Tzadikim, right? We say in the Shemayin Ezra, La Tzadikim and La Chassidim, Misham Miftach La Tzadikim. We have to bring in the, believe in the Kayach and the Tzadikim, believe in the Limar HaToyra, how important Limar HaToyra is. Learning Torah. When you learn Torah, your mom is saving the world. You're saving the world. Why? Because the world gets its oxygen. It gets its existence through Torah, Lima, Lima, not Torah. Through Lima, not Torah. So the more Torah we learn, the more davening we do, the more we talk to the Rabbi Nishlam and his Baidadus, is the way we're going to get out of this Golas. This is what we have to do. And we have to have Achtos. You know why you have to have Achtos? I'll tell you why you have to have achdus, unity. The word, the the uh, uh, the, the um, ahava, ahava, love, and echad is the same gematria. 
Ahava and Echad is the same gematria. Rabbi Akiva taught, the after l'reach ha-kamaycha ze klal gadol batayra. Love your friend, right? Love every Jew. Love everybody. Love all Jews. The after l'reach ha-kamaycha ze klal gadol batayra. That's a klal gadol batayra. Who taught us that? Rabbi Akiva taught us that. Do you know Rabbi Akiva was the son of a convert? He was Ben Gerim. The Gemara tells us. Rabbi Akiva, the great Rabbi Akiva, his father, his father, his father was not Jewish. He, he was a he was a Ger David Amelech, David Amelech, his great grandmother, Rus was was a Moavia. She was a Giyiris, right? This is where Agula comes from, connected to Meishu Rabbeinu, trying to bring us from Shmad Lerotsa. This is what Meishu Rabbeinu is working on doing, and this is what he's trying to do. Meish Rabbeinu, unfortunately, made a, 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 he, he didn't make a, the correct calculation again on Meish Rabbeinu's level. I'm not judging Chas Vashel and Meish Rabbeinu. But Meish Rabbeinu took out the Erev Rav, and Hashem said, don't. But he said, I can do this. Hashem, I think I can handle this. We know the outcome. We know the outcome. We know the outcome. But then again, Meish Rabbeinu is with us, and he's never going to abandon us. Like we just learned, he's never going to abandon us. Maishu Rabbeinu is always there with us. And he's always going to bat for us. Maishu Rabbeinu is always there for us. And we have to remember that. We mamish have to remember that with all our heart. We have to remember that Maishu Rabbeinu is always with us. And like we said, we wish that HaKadosh Baruch Hu take, and, and, and again, remember what Maishu Rabbeinu said, Mi Hashem Eli. Mi Hashem Eli. Who's on my side? Who's with me with Hashem? Let us all be on Meish Rabbeinu's side. Let us all turn to, 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 to the tzaddikim, the true tzaddikim. Let us all, let us all turn to each other. Love have achdus amongst Klal Yisrael. Forget about the right and the left and the this and the that and the Haredi and the, 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 and the, the Chiloni. And all. Everyone, we just need to have an achdus. Everybody. Everybody but yachad. That's how we're going to be. That's how we're going to be. Menatzeach. We're going to. We're going to win the battle. We're going to win this war. We're going to get out of Golis if we have Achdos. Ahava and Echad is the same gematri. Remember that. So I want to wish everyone a, a wonderful, a wonderful uh, rest of your week, and you should have a lechtig Shabbos. It's a hard Shabbos again. Yeah, listen, it's the Parshas Kisis, right? We read the thing, the the the, the, the sin of the golden calf. However, however, we have the Machzus Hashekel. So let's hold, hold on to the Machsas HaShekel. Remember that how important the mitzvah of tzedakah is. Thank you everyone for joining. And I, and uh, we, I wish everyone, yes, to everyone for joining. Call two of everyone.